Ashes of Creation is an upcoming MMORPG developed by Intrepid Studios that is set to change the genre with its massive scale, in-depth world-shaping systems, and enhanced artisan systems, and hopefully make MMORPGs great again. When you set out into the world of Vera with your empty wallets and basic gear, one of the earlier decisions you may want to make is how you plan to fund your adventures in this massive world. Whether you choose to hunt corrupted through the bounty system, sell your goods in the market, or farm the rarest mounts and armor, money will play a big part in your adventures. To make things easier, you may want to take a look into the Artisan System, which is the name for Ashes of Creation's crafting system, giving you a huge amount of choice in how you go about making money for that next raid or siege. The Artisan System is a tree-based system allowing you to progress and hone your skills as you seek out to master one of the three classes within. Gathering, which is the process of collecting resources or taming creatures, perhaps to get that cool mount that no one else has, processing, which has you take raw resources and refining them into more craftable goods, such as taking ores and making them into iron bars, and crafting, which has you take those refined resources and turn them into various equipments, gear, siege weapons, and ships. Each of these artisan classes have various professions within each tree, but be careful which one you choose to head down, as each character can only master one of these three classes. This doesn't mean you are completely excluded from the others though, as there will be some basic systems for each of the classes that allow players to have a sample of that crafting system to give you a better feel for what you actually want to do. Locking you behind one of these three classes will allow the economy throughout Vera to flourish as those seeking to trade their goods will have more value in the sale as not everyone can go out and make that cool sword for themselves. This system requires you to depend on other players or at least their resources to continue mastering your own profession. And for those who put the time into actually mastering their profession, not only will they be able to make the best items of that branch, but also unlock exclusive titles, quests, and access to various Various items that those who aren't quite as skilled as you won't have access to. Starting in the Gathering class, I take you to your nice peaceful freehold, sitting out there on the Plains of Era where you can pick up your life of farming, providing other players with goods that they can use to continue in the line of crafting. Farming plots are available on a player's freehold, which can be upgraded with node progression, allowing you to farm various crops and livestock to make your living. These materials can be sold off or traded to those in the processing profession or any player really, or converted directly into consumables through the alchemy and cooking which are both in the crafting class. But if planting seeds and plowing fields isn't your style, well then maybe you'll want to gather up some cows or chickens instead, where these animals can provide you with milk and eggs for your character to sell as well. Pay attention to the time of year though, as seasons will greatly impact your farming, limiting availability on certain crops, causing some resources in the crafting world to perhaps become more scarce, causing prices to go up, as suddenly those plants for your potions are a lot harder to find. Fishing is another gathering skill that will benefit you on your artisan adventures. This system is being made to be a bit more interactive and diverse than we normally see, as there will be no AFK fishing. It will require you to be doing something no matter what kind of fishing you take on. There is small game fishing, which is location based, meaning being in the right place at the right time to catch those types of fish. Then there's deep sea fishing, which requires boats, along with certain equipment and will require the completion of mini game type events to catch the fish. And then there is coastal and lake fishing, which can be done in any body of water for lesser rewards. Now you may be wondering what exactly you would want to waste your time catching fish for when all all of these other great professions are out there, well, fish aren't just a food type in Ashes of Creation, but they allow the players to craft furniture, clothing, costumes, potion, and the food that you're used to, so there will be a heavier demand in the economy for these items, allowing even a lone fisherman to make some decent cash. As a gatherer, you can also hone your skills in taming animals, having you set out into the world to find herds of creatures that can be tamed. These animals can then be used in the animal husbandry system within the processing profession to create mounts and pets. We then have the more self-explanatory gathering professions, which there isn't much detail on, but there doesn't really need to be. There's 
herbalism, which is setting out to gather various herbs. Then there's lumberjacking, which is gathering wood and cutting down trees. And mining, which is gathering ores. Each of these three gathering branches will require various tools to gather, which need to be upgraded for higher level resources. But finding the resources may be a bit of a hunt at times, as they will not continue to respawn in the same spot, preventing players from farming one small area. Once something is gathered, it will spawn in another spot on the map. Probably zone specific, as certain regions have different resources, so that one flower that you gathered from a tropical zone isn't going to spawn all the way up in the frozen mountains later on. That just doesn't make sense. If gathering isn't your style, then maybe you'll want to be a processor instead. Buying raw materials off players through the market stalls, shops, or auction houses so you can then refine them to sell off that refined material to the crafters. Right now, there are two confirmed ways to process materials. Smelting, which has you take ore and put it into a smelter and create ingots for crafting. And then there's the animal husbandry system. For a more in-depth look at this, I recommend checking out this video I made last year on the animal husbandry system. I'll be doing an update updated one when alpha 2 comes out as well but again it's a very in-depth system overall it has you take animals that have been tamed by gatherers and breed them to discover new variants of creatures these variants have different powers and abilities along with altered looks this system will allow you to unlock new pets and rare mounts these unique breeds will have different abilities such as speed health armor or energy depending on the creature type and can be sold to other players at auctions which is how you will make most of your money from this so those mount collectors out there can still gain access to the mounts that might be exclusive to the animal husbandry crafting, but they'll probably have to cough up a ton of gold to obtain them. When going through the breeding, it will take a bit of exploration as certain parameters will need to be in place to successfully breed an animal. And these parameters will be unknown to players until they discover them. They can be discovered by experimenting, along with doing different quests that lead you towards discovering these parameters. There are various states of life to these breeded creatures as well which will require you to take care and raise and train these creatures to get the stats you want starting off as a youngling which would be a baby or an egg depending on the creature type and then going all the way up through adulthood something to keep in mind though is that this system will weigh heavily on feedback in alpha 2 along with all of the crafting systems and could undergo a lot of changes and completely mix up how we plan to see it now The final branch to the artisan system is crafting. This system requires you to take those refined resources and turn them into various items and equipment that are discovered through recipes and blueprints. In order to craft, you will need to find the right crafting station, which can be found in appropriate level nodes and in your freeholds if you choose to place it. The time it takes to craft items will vary on what profession you are diving into. You have the more simple crafting professions such as alchemy, jewel crafting, and cooking, which allow you to create foods, jewel and potions, and then you have the bigger professions such as carpentry, which allows you to make furniture for houses. This is a big one for those who want to own a house at all, as all furniture in the game will be crafted by players. There will not be loot drops like a cane-sized bed dropping out of a small rabbit. It just won't happen. But there could potentially be blueprint drops from creatures allowing you to unlock even more furniture or decorations for people's houses. You will be able to make things such as beds, cabinets, chairs, chests, desks, shelves, stoves, tables, and various decorations and art to really liven up your house. Another profession in the crafting system is shipbuilding, which to me is one of the more exciting ones, but it's not quite as you'd expect. Anyone in the game, no matter which profession you choose, will be able to make their own ship. This needs to be done at a harbor, so you'll need to find a node that's developed near a coast, but every player will be able to access your basic ship. What shipbuilding is, is allowing components of the ship to be built and altered. Shipbuilders will craft items that can customize the movement, durability, speed, turn rate, hit points, defensive abilities, weapon slots, and cosmetics, which then these items can be sold to players. So basically, it sounds that if you want more than just your basic ship, you'll need to buy these items or craft them yourself by diving into the profession. In a similar fashion, there is also siege weapon construction. Siege weapons can be crafted by players or bought from a vendor and will be useful in node and castle sieges. It is unknown if this is going to be more like shipbuilding where everybody can construct certain siege weapons 
or if it's going to be a strict crafting profession that you need to master to make the best siege weapons. But no matter how it is, these weapons will be crucial to the successful siege of a castle or node. So when the time for war comes, they may be absolutely crucial to obtain, but in the times of peace, they may not be the best money-making items. Right now, there are only two confirmed siege weapons being ballistas and trebuchets. Last in the crafting branch, we have the more basic armor and weapon smithing, and as they sound, they allow for crafting weapons and armor. It is said that high-end armor crafting will be on par with best-in-slot items, so crafting armor will always be a valuable resource and shouldn't lose its value as people surpass the level of armor through the raids and dungeons. Crafters have the ability to assign different stats and abilities to the armor and weapons they craft, and will also have the ability to influence the look of items that they have crafted. What profession will you be diving into in Ashes of Creation? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you're new to Ashes and have yet to make an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below, that way you can jump in on the forums or buy some cosmetic packs or alpha access, whatever you want to buy, or nothing if you don't want to buy anything. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.